He was a heavyweight news executive at NPR. Now, Michael Oreskes joins a growing list of prominent media people who have been ousted over charges of sexual harassment. And NPR staffers are wondering why the move didn't come earlier. He had a stellar resume. The New York Times, the AP, and NPR. Michael Oreskes was frequently sought for his journalistic opinion. When you make a mistake, you really must correct it quickly. Now, though, Oreskes has been forced to resign after several women told stories of sexual harassment, some dating back 20 years. NPR reported the story, but they weren't the first. Those allegations were first reported by the Washington Post. And right away, that raised questions. Why was the Washington Post breaking a story about NPR? This story is now about NPR senior management. What they did or didn't know about these claims against Oreskes. There's a lot of anger at the CEO of NPR for perceived weakness on this front. Senior management says they were aware of one accusation against Oreskes, an incident involving current staffer Rebecca Hersher who said Oreskes asked questions about her sex life. He's the one with the power. He gets to decide what we talk about. NPR chief Yarl Mohn says the company took action against Oreskes after the Hersher incident and claims we having no solid information we, about we other allegations. There, and there had been rumors uh, circulating around the building here about his behavior, rumors and gossip. We can't act on that. We have to act on facts. But nine staffers told CNN Moan did not take harassment accusations seriously enough. CEO Moan was on the defensive, telling NPR's Mary Louise Kelly he asked people to come forward two weeks ago and heard nothing. Unfortunately, it took the published reports to have some things surface. But when you say it took published reports for this to surface, we're a news organization. Why are we getting scooped by the Washington Post on this? Moan had no answer for that. But now, worried about his own job, he sent a note to staffers last night saying, in part, I let you down. I should first disclose that WGBH-FM 89.7 is an NPR affiliate. WGBH Television is PBS, which is a separate entity. So this has really steamrolled, as you know, over the, over the week, uh, Farah, I mean, to the point where insiders and some very prominent women, Nina Totenberg, Susan Stamberg, have said no. People told uh, Jarl Moan and others about these incidents and that he was very slow to act. It seems like now he might be in a bit of a panic mode by acknowledging he, that he made a mistake. He had a, an open meeting today that was off the record. David Folkenflik, the NPR ombudsman or media reporter, I should say, did not go. But then he ended up getting information about what happened at the meeting and put it out, including two women who told their personal stories and people really angry with, yeah. with the CEO, uh, Yara Moen, saying, no, we told you, we told you, you should have taken action earlier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a, a I changed my mind on this, because at first I thought, oh, I have a little sympathy, you hire a guy, and then, you know, you spend a lot of time and energy bringing him on, and then you hear, he, he, he had a personal conversation, a conversation that went too personal, do you fire him? And then you hear that 20 years ago he did something, do you fire him? But, you know, I emailed a friend of mine at NPR and she said, oh, no. You know, as soon as this guy came on, we started hearing from our colleagues uh, at uh, the New York Times about him. He was a well-known serial harasser. People just warned each other for two years. Uh, not to go into his office alone, and that, you know, this is supposed to be like the guy in charge of news. So notice they fired him for, or they asked him to resign yes. for inability to lead the newsroom. And so, I mean, I think my, my friend just said, look, we're really angry. We're really angry at at uh, the head, of, and we're also angry at the at the COO, who is a woman, and they just mm -hmm. let it slide. They knew they had a serial and harasser, it, and they, they let it slide. Not not reporting the story first themselves. They, there was a lot of anger inside about that because, they're, you know, your own once again is saying, well, we didn't have enough to go with it. But it doesn't sound to me like they were ever planning to go with it. No, not no as a it story. doesn't. And I don't know how uh, candid Jarl Mohn has been about a number of issues. Uh, you said that Oreskes was asked to resign. Uh, David Folkenflik tweeted out today that uh, Jarl Mohn admitted in this meeting that he was not asked to resign. He was oh. fired. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and that isn't what Moan told no. Mary Louise Kelly. Mm. By the way, I should say, Mary Louise yeah. Kelly did a she fantastic did. job mm. of, of interviewing her boss. And <laughs> Moan sounded uh, defensive and desperately trying to hold and on nervous. to his job. Mm -hmm. And nervous throughout the whole 
throughout the whole interview. But yes, NPR should have reported this first. And the other aspect of this that I think is very troubling is I totally get that you don't throw the guy overboard for what he did at a previous employer 20 years ago. But it seems very clear that Moan did nothing to encourage a culture where people felt right. comfortable coming forward and talking about their concerns. Or potentially to mm. vet the guy before they hired exactly. him. Because yes. that's the thing. It, it, this exactly. is a cross-industry problem, as we have seen over the past week or two. This is, a, this is, in so many cases, a case of open secrets. I mean, everyone knows the guy who has done this multiple times in so many of these cases. So it becomes a management issue. It becomes an HR, a human right. resources issue. It becomes how do you... The problem is that when these things are handled behind closed doors in a case-by-case -case basis, you don't know whether he was fired, asked to resign, mm -hmm. given a little sweetheart deal. Nobody knows. There's no transparency. There are just secrets. Well, what we do know is that often these men have reputations that precede them, not these reputations. I mean, journalistic yeah, reputations. True. And they are, you know, touted as leaders and thought leaders and people. And they have, some, many of them, impressive backgrounds. And that often overrides. People say, well, you know, maybe they did that at the AP. Maybe he did that at the New York Times. But certainly I've been with him. We've had dinner. And that's not who he is now. Well, that's the sad thing happens. is, in so many yeah. cases, is that these mm -hmm. things happen. In, this, in the Oreskes mm -hmm. case, these were women who wanted to get career advice, right. advance in their careers. They were in such a position of vulnerability in in every way. And you know, he gets elevated to this position because right. of his career. People come to him because of his career, and then they get in this situation. People exactly. need to start investigating before they hire. Yeah. I mean, the question is, are we going to see this, is this going to snowball? Are we going to see something come out from the New York Times or the Boston Globe? Or, I mean, a, well, a lot of the papers are reporting on everybody else, but if you every have, institution has this. I think we're going to start course. seeing more and more and more. Of Absolutely. Course that. Okay, but let me get back to um, Farrah saying they need to investigate before they hire. Well, if the people that are having dinner with them and think they're okay are doing the hiring, how does this work? So, so we're back in the same situation. They go, where, oh, yeah, we heard yeah, that. Yeah, but it, yeah, but that, that it, was we're a past long time that. Ago. We're past that. Yeah, exactly. That happens a lot. I mean, I know that's happens. Oh yeah. A lot. yeah. I, I <laughs> you know? like, I, I'm hoping that we've reached some sort of a tipping point where people who were inclined to say that sort of thing now step back and say, wait a minute. If nothing else, for self-preservation. If I keep up with that old attitude, I'm going to end up mm, in trouble exactly. too. Mm -hmm.